Okay, good morning, afternoon, evening, or night, or whatever time you happen to be watching this video. You're back with me, Cool Dude Clem, and before we start, I would just like to say thank you to all of you who helped me figure out what was going on with that SD card. For those of you who don't know, I bought a 64GB SD card to back up some of my files onto, only to find out that it will not work in my SD card reader. But it will work in my laptop, so what I'm doing... So I've just got some files here that I'm copying over, and I'm copying them over to the laptop's hard drive via the Wi-Fi, and then I'm going to dump them onto the SD card, which is in there, if you can see it. Well, trust me, it's in there. So right now it's compressing all of these files into separate folders, I mean into separate zip files, so that's what this is all about. Now I've got a nice little script here, if I can just bring it up. Don't know if you can see that, but... That's what I use to do a batch conversion of files to compress them in 7-zip. And that seems to work pretty good. We're almost there. It's compressing a rather large folder at the moment, so that's going to take a little while, but... Alright, and that's done now. i still got a whole lot more stuff to back up, but let's just see how much this is, um, how much smaller this has made it. So, I'll right click on this, see how much space this is all taking up. These are the original folders. Okay, so we've got about 16 gigabytes worth of files there. Well, you can see that for yourself. Now, let's see how much the compressed files take up. And yeah, I know I've got the batch file in there as well, but uh, that's not going to make too much difference. Let's just see what that all comes to. 9 gigabytes. So we took 16 gigabytes more or less, and compressed it down to just over half that amount. So that's pretty good. Alright, and now it's time for the ranty part of the video. So, as you can see here, we're in Windows 7, and we've got pretty much everything here that, you can, that you'd normally expect. We've got the desktop, start menu, folders, you know, pretty much everything. But I can tell you right now that this is not firing on all four cylinders, and we'll get into why that is in just a moment. So, anyways, I was going through my DVDs the other day, trying to find something, and I came across a few videos that I thought might be worth uploading onto YouTube. And I still haven't uploaded all of them, there's still a couple more I need to upload, but anyway, the problem is... You cannot just put a DVD into the computer's DVD drive and upload it. It doesn't work that way. So instead, what I did was I copied the VOB files off the DVDs, as you can see here. But I needed something to convert the files so I could edit them and put them up onto YouTube. And the only free program I know of that can do this and do it really well is this program right here. Now, I used to use this religiously back in the day, but over time we drifted apart and I lost it, so I needed to use it again, so I decided I'd download it so I could use it again. Problem is, I downloaded it, I installed it, and I got a whole bunch of other crap as well. Now, I'm careful when I download things. I pay attention to the installer, and I decline from all those stupid special offers you get. However, the installer for this installed things anyway without even telling me. So I got the junk anyway. There was absolutely no way around it. And like I said, you have to be careful when you install things. Because if you don't pay any attention, you will get junk. And in some cases, like the installer for this, you get it anyway. So like I said, I wasn't having that, so 
I rebooted into Windows XP, deleted anything that looked suspicious off the Windows 7 partition, then booted back into Windows 7, did a Malwarebytes scan, and what do you know, Malwarebytes actually screwed up my computer. I'm not joking. And now I'm going to show you what it's actually done. So let's just close everything and reboot. So I'll shut down and restart. And anyway, while that's rebooting, I will just tell you a little more. So after Malwarebytes scanned and removed all the crap that I couldn't find, well, most of the crap, it didn't remove all of it, there's still some other things on there anyway, but it needed to restart, so I thought, okay, I'll restart the computer, and now all I get when I start Windows 7 is a black screen and a mouse pointer. That's it. Nothing else. No desktop. I mean, it looks like it's going to work. You can see the welcome screen come up. But just watch what happens, and you'll see that I was right. Of course, this could take years, like it usually does. And this is what I get now. This is it. Just got a mouse pointer, a black screen, and something else here that I don't even think should be there. It says Windows Scri, and that's it. So we'll just... Actually, I'll leave that open, because I have come up with a little trick that will get the desktop back. So I press Control Alt Delete because the Task Manager miraculously does still work. So we've got this thing here called Windows Script Host Settings, and that looks rather malicious to me. So just going to end that. And now to bring the desktop back up. So I go to New Task and type in Explorer here. I don't actually need to type it in because I've already typed it in, so it's already there. So just click OK, and here we go, the desktop's back, with little Tails and little Yoshi. But you know, I shouldn't have to do that, so yeah, it's still got problems. And let me just remind you, I, you know, booted back and forth from Windows XP to Windows 7 many times while I was trying to find the malicious files and delete them manually, and it was working absolutely fine until I did the Malwarebytes scan. And after I did the Malwarebytes scan, that's where the computer messed up. But anyway, like I was saying, this thing is not running on all four cylinders. There are still things on this Windows 7 that are making it misbehave. And I'll show one of them that has shown its ugly face. So I'm going to open up Firefox here. Not this little fox, but Firefox. If it will ever open up. Sometimes I have to click that several times before it will actually come up. But anyway, it all looks like it's okay. I mean, we got my well, we got my Gmail, we got my YouTube, and we got my comments. But let's search for something. I'm gonna put in. Why does my computer suck? Doesn't matter what I type in, but I'm just gonna type that in anyway. So Google comes up, and then it gets replaced with this thing. This Pam Six Web, or however you pronounce that, some weird Russian thing. I didn't want this. I wanted Google, and no matter how I change my settings back to how I want them to be, it always keeps changing back to this. There's also this other thing that comes up, something about fixing PC errors, that'll pop up like every 50 minutes or so. And I know they're the ones that put that on there in the first place. I just don't get it. I don't understand why when you try to install something these days, it tries to put all this extra crap on your computer. It doesn't make any sense. I don't want that stuff. And I'm sure it's giving whoever put that software out there, you know, the software that you actually want, I'm sure it's giving them a bad reputation. Now, back in the old days, it didn't used to be like this. 
when you downloaded any software, all you had to do was just run the executable, click next a couple of times, and there you go. It's installed. No mess, no fuss. And this is exactly how an installer should be. It just installs the program. In this case, me, Speakonia, without any crapware. And if you wanted to install that on another computer, let's say one that didn't have internet access, well, no problem. You could just copy that file you downloaded onto a disk or a flash drive or whatever, stick it in the other computer, install it on there, and there you go. Of course, even back then it was always a good idea to scan the file for viruses first, just to make sure the installer doesn't contain anything nasty, but you know what I mean. But nowadays, it's not that simple anymore. When you download something, instead of getting an installer that contains the software you want to install, these modern installers don't contain a damn thing. Instead, it downloads the software and installs it. So it's pointless even doing a virus scan on the installer because there's nothing in there. That will just download and install your software, virus or no virus, which I think is stupid. And as for trying to install something on a computer that doesn't have internet access, well, you can forget that. And of course, like I said, that's not all you get. Most of these download a lot of crapware. So if you're not careful and just click next all the time without reading what the installer is actually doing, you'll get a lot of stuff you don't want. And of course, that's what happened here. The installer downloaded and installed a whole bunch of crap without me even knowing. And there was no way around it. And all of this damage was done just by downloading one piece of software. I've downloaded torrents that are safer than this. Freaking torrents. Of course, I don't do that anymore because I've reformed. But I'm just throwing that out there. And this should not happen with freeware software. The sad thing is that this super is actually a pretty good program. I mean, it's, it is really good. It will convert just about any media file to anything else. It's just a shame they had to crapify the installer. Okay, now I'm going to prove it to you that there is absolutely no point in scanning the installer. So, I have the installer right here. And I'm not going to run it because I don't want to go through all that crap again. Even though I'm going to reinstall Windows 7 anyway. But let's just scan this with a couple of my anti-malware programs. First let's see what Zenma makes of it. Or Zemina, or however you pronounce it. And as you can see, nothing detected. So let's do a malware byte scan. Again, nothing detected. But I can tell you, if you were to run this file and try to install that software, you will get infected. It's just the stuff that gets into your computer is actually out there on the internet and it grabs that and installs it onto your computer without you even knowing. So if you want this software, do not download it from their website. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a portable version of this and I'm going to show you how I do it. So, make sure all hidden files are showing. I select all of this. I'm going to 7-zip it. So we'll have a portable version of this. So, alright, we'll just call it Super 7-Z or Super 7-Z. And we now have a portable version of this software. And because it's all self-contained, this will run regardless of what folder it's in, as I will now demonstrate. Right, I'm now going to transfer this over to my laptop, over the Wi-Fi. You have to excuse the slow connection, since it is a Wi-Fi connection that I'm transferring this over. But there it is. It's now on my laptop's hard drive, so let's try to run it. Alright, so here we are on the laptop, and here's the file I put on there. So, 
I'm going to unseven zip it. So, just extract a super. So, there it is. And if I run this, yep, I'm okay with that. There you go. So I'm going to upload this to um, Rapid Share or wherever it is I upload my files to. So you can get this portable version of Super that I just made. So there is absolutely no installer and this will not mess up your computer. I think that will be the only way that you can get hold of this now. If you want it and you don't want the installer that messes up your computer. But I guess, but you know, these days, even antivirus isn't safe. You saw what malware bytes did to my Windows 7. And another thing with antiviruses is, um, yeah, sure, they're going to delete any malicious files. But sometimes you try to run something that you know damn well is safe, and the antivirus quarantines it. It's ridiculous. So I think, from now on, I'm just not going to download anything ever again. There is just nothing safe out there. I've put all the software I'm ever going to use anyway onto an 8 gigabyte flash drive and there's still space to put some more stuff on there. And I know all this stuff is safe. Even though some of this stuff is installers, these ones do not put crap all over your computer because I've tested them and I know they don't. There is just nothing safe out there anymore. But anyway, that's just about all I have to say, because I've run out of things. So, this is Cool Dude Clem, and until next time, goodbye.